Hey young trombones, uh, I just wanted to take the time to make a video giving you all some of the different things you sh uh, could and should be doing. As a young player, you should focus on uh, you know, fundamentals so you can grow into being a great trombone player. Just like when you start a sport off, they start you with the basics. They start you with dribbling a basketball instead of saying, hey, let's run some plays. Um, so here's the rundown of the basics that we do all the time and a reminder of what to work on during this time away from the actual band room. So uh, first thing's air, second thing's embouchure and mouthpiece, third thing is scales. You gotta love scales. Fourth thing's are slurs and then the fifth thing we'll talk about is a couple of fun things. Um, so first of all, air. A big breath, always, it doesn't matter if you have one note and then 20 rest or if you have 17 million notes and then you get to rest for one measure. You always need to take the biggest breath possible. So how do we set ourselves up for a big breath? I talked to you all about one, good posture, and two, thinking about fogging up a window in your parents' car. Everybody loves doing that and then drawing little smiley faces or hi to their uh friend in another car or something. Um, so remember, blow out birthday candles on your hand. That's not what we want. That's cold air. Now fog up the window on your hand. And that's warm air. My breath kind of stinks. Just had some onions. It's fine. Um, so uh, as you breathe, remember there's kind of like two tiers. You're going to fill up the bottom first, and then you're going to fill up the top of your lungs, okay? So uh, looking sideways, let's see if we can get my stomach here in picture. Uh, we're going to go, notice how my stomach came out first, and then you can see my chest fill up as well, okay? That's me breathing from the bottom of my lungs to the top of my lungs. Again, that looks like this. All right, so we never want to be tense with our shoulders when we do that. We just want to relax and take the biggest breath. It's kind of like yawning. You got to remember, everybody is born as a great breather, and it's called yawning. So um, I'm going to post another video about air. Um, it's actually called the Breathing Gym, and you guys will see that after a while. Um, next thing we want to talk about is our embouchure, okay? Make sure that you have a solid embouchure. Firm corners, cheeks are in flat chin, lips are tight to your gums, okay? We don't want any air pockets around here. And then your teeth are in line, but they should be apart a little bit, okay? When all of that goes together, you should have a pretty good embouchure. When you play and put air through, especially if you're getting a big breath and using a lot of air, you're going to want to be a little loose here, okay? We cannot have that. Everything's got to be like a mask just pulled over your face, okay? So uh, I have not played. This is me actually warming up with you, okay? So we just talked about our embouchure. Uh, I forgot one. Wet lips. Always wet lips, okay? Um, so let's get our buzzes in. And uh, again, you should do this every time you practice. Get a normal buzz in. Big breath. And then make sure you get your high and your low in. <laughs> high to low. And then low to high. <laughs> All right. We want high to low to high. And then the opposite. <laughs> opposite. <laughs> And a big fat siren for us. All right. As you do these, you need to make sure that your embouchure is still solid and that you're working to expand your range, okay? Every time you do one of those, which of course I only did them once, but you should do them at least two or three times whenever you're warming up. So uh, if I go high to low, three times in a row, each time I'm trying to expand what my high is and what my low is, okay? My lower got lower, but my high didn't really get higher. Um, just something I'll have to work on. So, after we get into that, we want to go on to our scales, okay? Every time you play, 
Uh, start with some scales. They're an important part of what you play. They're in music all over the place. We as trombone players, we don't get a lot of melody. We know that, okay? We get a lot of bum, 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 bum. We just get a bunch of half notes. We don't get to play melody a lot. Now, when you're older, you're going to see that a lot more music has low brass melody in it. So how do we keep up with that? If we are stuck with half notes all the time that the trumpets and the flutes and everybody have um, interesting melodies, how do we keep up with that? Well, a good way to do it is scales. It's going to help. So you guys should know four scales by now. That's your F major, B flat, E flat, and A flat major. We've covered all those. They're in the back of your book. We've done them tons of times. You should be keeping up on those because when you get back to school, it's not like I'm going to forget about them. You know I'm going to go back and forth with them. So um, play through your scales. Do it with a good embouchure, big breath, practice the fundamentals. <laughs> scale. Once you get through that, start to work on the arpeggios and the scale in thirds. you got to remember to check your key signature, okay? I'm going to take A flat major uh, for an example. You have B flat, E flat, A flat, and D flat, okay? That last flat, especially D flat, is the one that's going to get you when you go to do your scale in thirds, okay? If you have a key signature that tells you B flat, E flat, A flat, and D flat, Unless they mark in a natural or a sharp somewhere, that's what the notes are. So we have to choose the correct position. D flat is not in fourth. Remember when we say flat and we know the natural position being D is in fourth, when I add the word flat, we just go out one position to D flat. Okay, here's my A flat major scale. <laughs> skip the arpeggio and I'll go to the scale in thirds. Now the fourth note that I come across is D, but according to the key signature, it's flat. So every time that note needs to be flat, okay? I cannot stress that enough. Your second to last note we might not have talked about in that scale in thirds, but it's a low G in fourth position. I know my sixth graders know that, but fifth graders, I don't know that we got to talk about that before spring break. So keep in mind that scales help. So as a young musician, other than your concert music and going through your book and, um, and looking at new things, your big things are air, embouchure, scales, boom always, mouthpiece work, all these things are going to make you guys great players. And sometimes it's hard to put in the time, but it does pay off. So that fifth thing that I was talking about is just fun things, okay? I witnessed a few of you uh, looking at different pieces of music on your own. Maybe you're Googling, um, like I, I know our saxophones love to play Dance Monkey. And if you find that, that's great. Of course, you got to remember that everything that we do in class, this mouthpiece work, the reading notes and reading rhythms, all of that makes it so you can go out and do uh, these fun things like find your own little melodies to play or even write your own melodies. Um, it's awesome to see you exploring music on your own, so continue to explore music on your own. Remember, just because we don't have uh, something written down doesn't mean that you can't do it. So enjoy your time. Um, I, I kind of skipped over slurs, but we talk about slurs all the time. So I'll hit on that really quick. Um, so we want to take our uh, positions, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and especially for fifth graders or sixth graders who might not have a long enough arm. I know there's a couple of you. 
Um, if you just go out to six position, it's fine. So um, we want to make sure that we're doing patterns and we go out one position at a time. <laughs> save you seventh position for now. So that's just one pattern that I did. That was F, B flat, F. Did I get the pictures right? Kinda. Um, and you can make up your own pitches out of, or your own patterns out of the notes that you know. Sixth graders, you should be able to go up to a high F by now. Well, you can do that in second position too. All the way out to sixth position. Uh, fifth graders, you've probably been working on getting that high C out. Well, that's okay too. If you just want to focus on getting that next note, you don't have to start in first position. What? I know. Think about it. If you're trying to get third position, high C out, why don't you just start in third position? Okay. <laughs> So I did A flat, E flat, A flat, C, and I got my C out. Remember, as you slur up, we think E. As we slur down, we think ah. So I'm going ta e ah, all in third position. And thinking those vowels E and ah, ah is kind of a vowel, but A, ah, uh, it actually helps our embouchure move in the correct way. E, we pull things back, we firm up, ah, uh, we drop our jaw. That's what helps us play low notes. So, I hope that you found this enjoyable. I know it's a lot of what we've done. Um, so, hopefully it's nothing that surprises you. Keep working on the trombone. Remember, the best of you next year get to play other instruments like baritone and tuba and bassoon. Ooh. All right. Happy practicing.